linebacker with speed, finesse, and power. One thing about a linebacker, you're always looking for that one hit of a lifetime. I haven't got that one yet, but I'm, I'm always in search of it. Mike Singletary, emotionally intense, physically gifted, powerfully motivated. Physical contact to me is just uh, another way to say collision. Between them, they have been there three times. The most important thing is not getting there. The most important thing is winning it. They have won all three of their opportunities. Winning is the crown. Winning is the crown of the perseverance, uh, the, the patience, uh, the blood, the sweat, the tears, the broken bones. I'm always impressed with his, um, his fire about the game. He still has that tremendous drive, that tremendous love for the game. A maniac. A guy that plays the game the way it's supposed to be played. Taylor and Singletary in one of the NFL's oldest rivalries, the Giants and Bears, on ABC's Monday Night Football. Cool evening here in the Windy City, but a sellout crowd expected, and why not? It's one of the NFL's oldest rivalries, the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. Happy you're with us for the Bears and Giants, two of the oldest franchises in the NFL. They've been playing for nearly 70 years. I, I played in a few of those games myself, a couple of title games, and I can tell you the intensity, emotion is still here. The Bears ended a night 1-1. One one. They are not happy about that. The Giants come in 0-2. Oh they are very unhappy about that. And, Al, it's hard to believe the Giants at 0-2 oh are being written off by a lot of people. If they lose this game tonight, only... One game, or rather one season, and two games removed from their dramatic Super Bowl win over Buffalo. Frank, I think the Giants are an aging team on the verge of transition. The question thus becomes, is there one last hurrah left for the current crop? Think of it this way. If they win tonight, they're not in that bad of shape. One and two after two losses to two very good teams, an off week next week, and a very soft schedule in October. If they lose tonight, you can expect that transition to start right away, and the veteran players know it and expect it. So a big game for the Giants tonight against the Bears who come in one and one. Dan, how do they look to you after two weeks? Well, I don't think this is a, a last hurrah football team, Al, like you're talking about the Giants. But when you think back to the powerhouse Bear teams of the mid-80s, I think names like McMahon and Peyton come to mind. And you think offense. But really, those teams were generated and powered by their defense. Now, uncharacteristically for the Bears, in their first two games this year, they've given up six plays of 40 yards or more. If the Bears can tighten things up defensively, I'll be real surprised if they're not a playoff team again here in 1992. Big crowd at Soldier Field. Matt Barr ready to put it in the air as the Chicago Bears get set to receive the opening kickoff. Dennis Gentry and Mark Green at the goal line ready to accept Barr's kick. And here we go from Chicago. As the kick floats down to the seven yard line, this is Mark Green straight up the middle and hit hard at the 22. And that's where the Bears will begin. Jim Harbaugh, who started every game for the Bears last year, and that's the first time it's been done in a Chicago uniform by a quarterback in a decade, has Neil Anderson and Brad Muster back of him. Davis and Waddle are the wideouts. Keith Jennings is the tight end. The offensive line, they start a rookie, Troy Ozine, at left tackle, and he'll see a lot of Taylor tonight. Then Wojciechowski, Fontenot is the center. Hilgenberg, as you know, traded to Cleveland. Thayer and Van Horn on the right side. First and 10, Chicago at the 22-yard line. Jennings in motion. And they begin with a play fake. Good protection for Harbaugh, and a wide open Jennings making the catch and getting the first down as he picks up 13. The Giant defense now, and they have given up more points through the first two weeks than any other team in the league. Dorsey, Washington, and Fox, they're really hurting there with Leonard Marshall missing. Banks, Johnson, Diossi, and Taylor are the linebackers. And then Collins and Williams on the corners. Walls and Jackson are the safeties. Myron Guyton is finished for most of the season with back surgery. We mentioned Marshall who had 
Arthroscopic surgery on his knee, not here, and Eric Howard is hurting and can only play sparingly tonight at nose tackle. With Morris in motion, here's Anderson to the right side. He gets turned in, and he's tackled near the line of scrimmage. Greg Jackson, number 47, coming up to make the initial contact. There is a look at Eric Howard, a big key man for them. The nose tackle, stuffing the run and all of that, but a guy who can only play maybe a third of the time tonight. Eric is very tough against the run. A key man probably for the Giants missing tonight. The touched on it is Leonard Marshall. He works so well with Lawrence Taylor over the right side, not only against the run, but in their different pass deals. And he will not be here. He's back in New York watching. Second down and 11. Taylor gets blocked, but somehow still gets involved in the play as Brad Muster, mm, Brad Muster was the ball carrier, and Taylor pays the price. So the last sight that the Giants would want to see is that one, with Marshall missing and Guyton missing and a defense that's had a rough time. And there is the main man. Well, one of the things the Giants have been concerned about is that the game is being played on their side of the line of scrimmage. We saw great support by Greg Jackson, and now Lawrence Taylor decides to force the issue. Let's play it on the Bears' side of the football. He beats the block, gets into it, but you can see he takes the knee right on the shoulder. That was Neil Anderson with the lead block that Taylor got inside. And again, let's look at it here from the far side of the field. Got there his head in the there, Dan. But look at the knee. He takes the left knee of Muster right up where the neck meets the shoulder. That's Dr. Russell Warren, the team physician out there attending to Lawrence, who was writhing in pain. It didn't appear to be that lead block by Anderson. It, it, it appeared to be the collision with Brad Muster that, that put Lawrence Taylor on the field. Another look. I think right there, it's where that left knee of Muster drives right into the crease where the neck meets the shoulder of Lawrence Taylor. And Lawrence is up and walking off the field. But again, I... I want to remind you that the Giants have been very disappointed, the Giant players, with the way they have been reacting and not forcing the issue defensively. And Lawrence clutching right up at the shoulder. And I'm sure he'll be ushered off and be x-rayed right here in the stadium and in the area of the clavicle. It is third down and 11 as play resumes for the Bears on the opening drive of the game from the 36-yard line. Here comes the blitz, but Harbaugh gets it away. Davis makes the catch, and he is wrestled out of bounds short of the first down by Greg Jackson. So the Giants are able to hold, and Chicago is forced to kick. Harbaugh with some sod on his helmet. That's a common sight here in Chicago. You can see Everson Walls was coming on a safety blitz. Banks was also there. He was not the key blitz man, but he might turn into that tonight with Lawrence Taylor, at least for the moment, sideline. Chris Gardaki to punt. Dave Meggett, who is healthy, to accept the kick, but it's a fake. And at the 40-yard line, the catch is made by Ron Rivera, who's been involved in that play a couple of times in his career, but the Giants are able to stop him at the 40-yard line. So Chicago trying to fool the Giants early on an incomplete pass and the Giants get a mammoth early break well I don't know if Chris Kardaki was ever a quarterback that was one of the worst passes you will see right into the turf giving there's no chance to come up with this football and he tried to one hand it off the turf that's incomplete right there so what could have been a easy first down for the Bears a poorly thrown pass the Giants will get good field position. Good oh. news and bad news, Andy, because Corey Miller went limping off. So two linebackers already hurt, but the Giants have good field position for their first drive. They're working on Miller right there. Number 57, an already banged up Giant defense. And let's take a look at what happened to Corey Miller. Watch the right side of your screen. Ed Reynolds, the linebacker, comes in. You can see him throw that left forearm right into the side of Corey Miller and hopefully for Miller it's just a case of getting the wind knocked out of him. A curious play though by the Bears. I would have expected that by the Giants that are really in a must win situation. Uh, Here's Hampton on the Giants first play from scrimmage stopped by Singletary after a gain of a couple. 
And let's take a look at the Giants offensively. Phil Sims, he wasn't the starter in training camp, but remember Hostetler got hurt. Sims got the job, and he's still there in week three. Hampton developing into one of the best in the league along with Bunch. The fullback Ingram has been spotted by a hit pointer, but he's there with Baker Cross as the tight end. Up front, Elliott Cratch, Oates, Moore, and Riesenberg. William Roberts in uniform, but not starting, and Moore starting for the first time after a long holdout. And Bunch gets bunched up by four Bears, including Trace Armstrong, the first to meet him, number 93, and he's played very well at the beginning of the season. Let's take a look at that Bear defense. They've used that base 4-3 with Armstrong, McMichael, the Fridge is there, and Dent. We'll also see Chris Zorich rotating a tackle. Rolfer, Singletary, of course, in the middle in his final year. He'll retire after 92 and Cox. Wolford and Stinch in the corners. Paul and Carrier, the safeties. Sean Gale, who went to the Pro Bowl last year, the safety, on injured reserve back early next month. Alonzo Spellman, the rookie, number 90, now comes in on the defensive line. Third and 13. Sims throws, and the catch is made, and a nice move, but a flag is down by Chris Calloway. He has a first down, but a marker is down. Marcus Paul makes the tackle. Howard Rowe is the referee, and this one comes back. Ray Hanley, as Lawrence Taylor tries to shake it off, Hanley has watched his team not make a first down. Holding number 30 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. Hanley's team has not made a first down on any of their first three drives in the first two games of the season. That's Dave Maggot, the back who stayed in trying to pick up the blitzing halfback, John Mangum, coming from the corner. Maggot a little undersized to be in the backfield doing the pickup work at 5'7", 180 pounds. So he went to the hold. Third and 23 for the Giants at their own 45. Bears rush four. Sims is going to run with it about seven yards. He gets across the 50. He is stopped by Spellman, and the Giants are forced to kick. So again, the Giants on their opening drive are three and out. Good coverage downfield. Bill Sims, well aware where he was on the football field, but they're just was no receiver he could find to deliver the ball to. So he pulled it down and had to run. He didn't want to do it, but he was forced to. There it is, opening day against the Niners. No first down, first three possessions. Same thing last week. Here's Landetta now, who had one punt blocked and one punt deflected last week against Dallas. This is a short angle kick that is fumbled at the 18-yard line by Donnell Wolford. A scramble at the 25-yard line, and who's got the football? Well, the Giants had it, but before the officials got in there, the ball was loose once again, and the Bears got it back. Mm -hmm. Steve Diossi is among those at the bottom. Boy, you could see that it appeared that somebody from New York had the ball, and before an official could declare possession, it was free once again. Wolford never does have possession. That's a muff. There's Steve Diossi. A lot of Giants had a shot of it, but the Bears picked it up. Sprained right shoulder. He's questionable in terms of returning. And you can see they're attaching a neck collar to his shoulder pads. Looks like Lawrence plans on returning. Canavis McGee takes his spot. Meanwhile, here's Anderson to the outside and picking up about nine. Perry Williams makes the hit, second and one. ABC's Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. And your local price to Plymouth, Dodge, Jeep, and Eagle dealers. By Dollar Rent-A-Car, right on the airport, right on the money. By the companies of Kemper Corporation, making dreams come true. And by Budweiser, the king of beers, with that clean, crisp, cold taste. Nothing beats a bud. There is Miller. Miller has a bruised elbow. He will return. Meanwhile, some pressure now on the second-year man out of Colorado, Canavis McGee, number 96. Second and one, Chicago. No score. Early first quarter. The ball at the Bear 36. Brad Muster with a nice move to the outside and picks up the first down up at the 42-yard line. Jackson and Collins converge on the tackle. Well, it's Neil Anderson being put in the position of lead blocker. This time he has to take on Carl Banks. So Neil Anderson, who for years has been the man in the backfield for the Chicago Bears, now is at least early on in this Giants game, been the guy that's playing the fullback position, the lead blocker. 
You know, Banks did his job. He cleaned up Neil Anderson in the backfield, but there was no pursuit coming across from the middle. But this is really a makeshift up front defense right now for the Giants. They're struggling. Howard's gone. Leonard Marshall's gone. Taylor's on the bench. First down at the 42-yard line. Harbaugh for Davis, and he makes the catch, and he's written out of bounds after picking up 11. That's a first down at the Giant 47. Coverage by Collins among the injured on the uh, Bear sideline. Mark Bortz, who will be one of their starting guards, two-time Pro Bowler. Rod Rust is the new defensive coordinator, and he's felt some heat in New York. They brought Rod in. Used to be with the Steelers in New England. In fact, he was the head coach of New England a couple of years ago, and he's changed the defensive scheme. Last week, they were abysmal in the first half and played very well in the second defensively against Dallas. First down at the 47-yard line. Muster. Good blocking. Jackson has to come up to make the stop. Anderson helping to lead the way along with Wojciechowski. That's difficult for a guy like Neil Anderson to tie up with a defensive back as long as he did and not get called for holding. A lot of backs would have drawn the flag. He was blocking Perry Williams out on the point of attack. And sure, Neil Anderson's walking back to the huddle and saying, uh, you know, this is all fun being a team guy and <laughs> things like that. Take a look there at the top of the screen. See Anderson working on Williams. Very effective taking him to the outside. And Williams really just is in a cleanup position after Jackson makes the good open field tackle. I think Neil Anderson is more comfortable with the ball in his arm rather than the ball three yards behind him. Second and five at the 42-yard line. And here on an end around comes Wendell Davis for a first down to the 29-yard line. Jackson makes the tackle and has his helmet taken off in the process. A gain of 13, and the Bears on the move. Good strategy, I think, on the part of the Bears, Dan, don't you? They come in against a defensive team that has been having its problems with both in, at the attack. They've been fighting with their defensive coach. You come in, first of all, you come with play action, your opening play, you have an end around, you go on a punt situation, you throw the football. Everything that Mike Ditka is doing right now is very disruptive to a team that's already having its problems. It is certainly uncharacteristic. The Bears, uh, I think, known as a very vanilla offensive team. Much to the chagrin of their fans here in Chicago. We've seen everything but that. Seven minutes to go in the first quarter with no score. Here's Anderson sweeping left. Inside the 20. Bumped out of bounds at the 10 by Everson Walls. Ron Morris through the block that time that sprung him. And John Wojciechowski got out around the corner. Wojo makes a good block downfield. And one of the problems the Giants have been having is that their support has been slow. People have been getting around the corner, breaking contain. There's Wojo 73 breaking upfield. Ron Morris with the block at the line of scrimmage. But that is a corner. That's an unchallenged corner by the New York Giants. In this game, you should not be able to turn the corner uncontested, Frank. And that is the Leonard Marshall and Lawrence Taylor corner, by the way. And Lawrence mm -hmm. comes back into the game to see what he can do. None too soon for the Giants. First and ten, just outside the ten. Inside handoff and seeking room. Anderson carried. Mike Fox making the tackle as Anderson picks up about two. And you look straight down into venerable Soldier Field on the lakefront of Chicago. How's that for a little vertigo? <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to spin this thing, too? <laughs> Airship Shamu from SeaWorld providing the aerials tonight. On, uh, well, it's cleared up a little bit. Uh, it's rained here over the past 24 hours. The field has been covered, so um, it's still a little soggy. Had a Taylor. great night, too. Yeah. It's absolutely perfect for football. Second down, called at seven at the eight-yard line, and the Bears are going to take a timeout. Late in coming to the line of scrimmage, Blake Clock was down to five. Timeout in Chicago. 546 left in a scoreless first quarter. Call a timeout. 546 left in the first quarter. This is Chicago's second drive of the night. Eric Howard, the nose tackle, who is hurt. You saw him on the Giants sideline. The Giants have yielded four first downs on this drive. A look at the numbers on this drive, and it's second down and seven from the eight. Fake to Anderson. Harbaugh with room. 
throwing and then he throws it away because nobody could get open in the end zone. He had a couple of guys down there, Wendell Davis and the tight end Kelly Blackwell. Big play by Carl Banks. Carl Banks not only gave that support on the corner, but he forced a radical change in direction by Jim Harbaugh, and Harbaugh had no choice but to throw it away. Harbaugh came out of there with every intention of running that football. Watch Carl Banks. He's standing up. He's going to float, make the read. Jim Harbaugh right here has every intention of running with the ball, and Carl Banks makes him change and retreat and throw it away. Nice play, Carl. Mm -hmm. Shotgun, third and seven, ball at the eight-yard line. It's Dennis Gentry in motion. Harbaugh throws, Anderson makes the catch and gets in for the touchdown. You know what was nice about that move, Frank, was how quickly Neil Anderson was able to gain control of the football and turn up field and get into the end zone. He he caught that so close to making his move upfield. That's where you see a guy drop the ball a lot of times. Well, he can do a lot of things for you. Watch number 35 out of the backfield. Good receiver. He can even play outside as a flanker if they want him to. Here's what Dan's talking about. And not only that, covering up the football, taking no chance of being stripped. He's been under a lot of fire here in Chicago. But he's not playing with the same offensive line he's played in past years. Butler with the point after. So the Bears get a big break when Deashi can't cover the fumble. The Bears get it back and they march 74 yards. They lead seven to nothing. And now it's time for a regular feature on what's new in the world of sports science and technology. Feel the skyline of Chicago. The Loop, downtown, Michigan Avenue, and the rest, and Soldier Field. Filled, as always, Neil Anderson just caught his second touchdown pass of the year. The Giants have gone 20 years. We bring it up every year <laughs> since they run a kickback for a touchdown. Rocky Thompson did it in 1972. Gardaki kicks off. Yeah, Rocky loves it. Yeah, at the six-yard line, it is taken and upended at the 23-yard line. A vicious tackle made on Joey Smith, second-year man, and the guy who did a lot of things at the University of Louisville, and Dante Jones, who occasionally is a special teams terror, is the guy who upends him. Big hit, and Dante Jones is the heir apparent to that middle linebacking job, which Mike Singletary will leave this year after 12 great years. Yeah, well, Joey Smith uh, wishes that he would start playing middle linebacker and a little less on kickoff coverage. <laughs> From the 22-yard line, they give it to Jared Bunch. He takes it up to the 26-yard line. He was the number one draft choice last year, mainly a blocker and special teamer last year, and Ray Hamby wants to get him the ball a little more tonight if he can. Of course, their key back is Rodney Hampton. Numbers for the Bears, 74 yards and 451. And Frank touched upon it while it was happening, but it was the diversity of the Chicago offense labeled as come straight at you with the old Ohio State three yards and a cloud of dust. Anything but on that drive. Nice mixing and matching by Greg Lander. Second and six from the 26. Sims looks right, goes left, hits Stephen Baker. That's only a second catch of the season. And Baker is out of bounds and a flag is thrown at the 38-yard line. So some more yardage will be tacked on. Coming, coming in there a little late, but a good read by Phil Sims. The pattern, primary pattern was to his right and a good Blocking by that offensive line because he had time to turn all around, all the way around and find Baker. First foul, foul on a defense, number 24, unnecessary roughness, 15 yards. Well, I, they must have seen. They down. must have seen something that I didn't see. They flag Richard Fain, but boy, that didn't look like anything. Let's watch it here from behind. This ought to give us a real good look. There's Fain. Oh, you have to mm. be kidding me! <laughs> you have to be kidding me! That is no more a personal foul than, than if the guy trips and falls down on his own. That's not a personal foul in flag football. No, that's right in front of Mike Ditka, who didn't even complain about it. Oh, it's, no, that is a, uh, that's a good break for the Giants. And that's a real bad call. First down at the 47-yard line for New York. Then again to the left side, and Stephen Baker had gone two games and most of the first period of this one was just one catch on the year, and now he catches balls back to back. That's a real fine read by Phil Sims. He changes this play at the line of scrimmage. The Giants pick it up, get both backs in on the blitz. 
Phil knew he was going to get single coverage. Lamille Stinson covering on Baker. He got the coverage, got the ball in there, close to another first down. Phil Sims in a lot of years, 14 of them, brings a lot of brights to this game. Second and one at the Chicago 37. Bears up 7 0, 405 to go in the opening quarter. Here's Hanson, great slip move. He does that beautifully and runs very well in traffic as Rodney takes it to the 27 yard line, emerging as one of the, the premier running backs in the league. He is that, Alan. He is so big. And he just kind of throws a tackler off because of his size. And you can see the average. He has been carrying the ball, the primary rusher for the Giants, and gets a good block up front and just kind of skips around it. Jumbo Elliott up front. But he slips so many tackles because I think the tackler just doesn't realize how quick he is because he's so large. First and 10 at the 26 yard line. In back of bunch and turns nothing into something as he gets it down to the 23 yard line a gain of about three one of the by Cox and Armstrong one of the good battles up front is between Bob Cratch who's playing left guard and William Perry who's making his first start of the year at defensive tackle it was Cratch's block on that last run by Hampton and then on the last play Cratch took Perry a couple yards off the line of scrimmage which is no easy task taking a man 320 pounds off the ball. Well, he looks absolutely slim this year, though, doesn't he? Yeah. Down from about 380 or 390. Keep an eye on those guys in the middle. Second, let's call it six at the 22. <laughs> and the catch is made by Ingram, and he steps out of bounds at the 19-yard line, a little short of the first down, and there's a flag down at the 17-yard line in the middle of the field. Look at that. Bullying. <laughs> I don't think, out of there. I don't think Cratch could uh, handle prosperity. A <laughs> couple of uh, sensational blocks and uh, now a whiff. Defensive holding, that's an automatic first down. And the new Mike Ditka takes that in stride without any show of anxiety holding. or stress. Defense. Number 21, five-yard penalty, first down. He showed a lot of restraint when they called that roughing penalty right in front of him on the sidelines. In years past, he would have climbed all over someone. You're, you're still leaving the new Mike Dick in quotes, right? Yes. It's early. It's very early. And penciling it in. First down of the 18th. Seven to nothing, Chicago. Giants with an impressive march here. 2.25 to go in the first quarter. And here's Hampton again. Rodney takes it to the 15-yard line. Perry and Cox in on the tackle. Ray Hanley, as you all know, took over last year. Bill Parcells, after winning the Super Bowl, waited until May 15th because of his uh, health situation and his heart to step down. Hanley got the job. The only other head job he has had is at a high school in Nevada several years ago, but a longtime assistant. And he was on the staff with both giant Super Bowl champions. Singletary. Looking straight at Sims on second and eight. Sims for Cross in the end zone. And Howard Cross is in for the touchdown. He caught one last week against Dallas. He catches one here. And Phil Sims, of course, for years has loved to go to his tight ends. Oh, and he well, picked the perfect play there because all tied up with the linebacker was Howard Cross. Ron Cox was back there trying to cover him now. Howard Cross has really picked up the tempo as receiving as a receiver this year. There he is with Cox totally out of his league back there covering deep in the end zone. And Cross holds on to the ball long enough for the six. Good read by Phil. Far for the point after to the Giants with a 77-yard drive. Far converts. Cross, his second touchdown catch of the season, 136 to go in the opening quarter, tied at seven. Staggered and stumbled in each of their first two games on their opening drives, as we illustrated before. But despite those problems, every time they've had the ball in what they refer to as the red zone inside the opponent's 20, they've gone in for a touchdown, a perfect seven for seven. And they do it here as Phil Sims leads them down the field and the game is tied. The Giants, though, are still looking for their first lead of the season. Trailed all the way against the 49ers and 
as you all know last week they were down 34 to nothing to Dallas before mounting a, a miraculous comeback closed to within six and even had the ball with a chance to drive down the field again but couldn't do it that had to be a very satisfying drive Tim's able to read the defense change the plays hit the right receiver Far kicks off it's a short kick it is taken at the 18-yard line by Darren Lewis. Another fumble. Philippi Sparks, the rookie, was right there. Did he get it? Sparks looked like he recovered the football. And they will unpile, and Howard Rowe will tell us who has the ball. As soon as he can figure it out. Yeah. It really becomes territorial here, doesn't it? Well, it's a, it, the ball is still up for grabs. I mean, this is not a question. This ball can change possession several times before an official finally sees it in someone's control. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's not awarded to the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a flag, and there's a catch made of the flag. I'm not, I'm not so sure that flag wasn't thrown by one of the players. Was that thrown by an official? Well, Reese Douglas caught it. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right, let's take a look at it and see, was this a legitimate fumble? Possession. And that is not a fumble. Nope. That is not a fumble. There's no instant replay, but Lewis has possession of the football when he hits the, the ground. So really... Unnecessary roughness on number 33 receiving team. And that's actually on Lewis, the man who had the ball. So it cost the Bears the yardage that the personal foul penalty, now that it's being assessed against the Bears, but it's justified that the Bears end up retaining possession because Lewis had control of the football when he made contact with the ground, and that's, that's not a fumble. But again, replay not in effect here tonight. No or idea or this season. I no idea what Lewis might have been doing because everybody was pushing and shoving and he was at the bottom of the pile. So the Bears start at their own 10-yard line. For the record, Dicka is a proponent of instant replay and would like to see it back in an amended form. 125 to go in the opening quarter. Game time at 7. Harbaugh. Little swing pass to Anderson. Nice flip move on Johnson, but he can't go anywhere as Ed Reynolds comes up to make the tackle. Good move by Pepper Johnson to get into the left flat because Carl Banks had come on the blitz from the left side. The Bears had the right play call for the right situation, but Johnson was able to move out into the area and make the stop. That, that was such a good move by Neil Anderson to put Pepper Johnson to the ground. It was such a strong move that he could move himself afterwards. He took such a lateral leap that he had both his feet so far underneath him that the deal wasn't able to go anywhere after that. Second and 11 at the nine yard line. Anderson. Jackson is right there to meet him at the 13 yard line. It'll set up a third down and seven. Neil Anderson has been here now long enough, of course, that he is moving up and up in the books. He ties Rick Caceres for second place on the all-time list with that last touchdown, but of course he is way behind the all-time leader, Walter Payton. In every category. Mm -hmm. First quarter is about to expire. Game is tied 7 7. Back we come with Monday Night Football after this message and a word from our ABC station. Third and seven at the 13 yard line for Chicago as we start the second quarter. Harbaugh throws, catch made at the 20. Neil Anderson up to the 27 yard line in the first down. Tackled by Perry Williams. Tied at seven, and here are the numbers, the composite numbers through the first 15 minutes of action. A couple of big drives by both teams, and we're locked up at seven. That was a just a crossing pattern, and we were seeing so much more of the pick play in the NFL this year, wouldn't you say, Dan? 
That was a good example of it. And it, it's really the type of, they, we call it a pick play, but in reality it's, it is the defensive players that are running into each other. They're not actually making contact with an offensive no, player. not illegal. No, not at all. Here's Muster behind an Anderson block. I mean, Neil Anderson is doing everything tonight. Muster gets up to the 35, stopped by Everson and Walls. Gain of eight. ABC's Monday Night Football is... He's been doing a lot this game. Very active. Takes on Carl Banks, and while it wasn't a, a pancake or anything like that, you'd have to rate it as an effective block. Kept Banks out of the play. Muster was able to turn up field. Neil Anderson doing everything tonight for the Bears. Second and two at the 35-yard line. Here he is again, swinging to the left. He loves running left. And Neil Anderson, whose ability is being somewhat questioned by a few people in this city, is answering some of his critics tonight. Johnson and Jackson in on the hit. And we've got another giant down on the field. Is that Ed Reynolds? It is. Another, another, linebacker. Linebacker. another linebacker is exactly right for the Giants and Ray Handley cannot afford to see many more of his defensive players get nicked in this game. We're just in the early part of the second quarter. There's Keith Jennings taking on Lawrence Taylor at the point of attack which you can't tell from behind is that Lawrence Taylor actually drove Jennings about three yards into the bare backfield. But again the support was late in arriving and Neil Anderson was able to get around the corner. I would really rate Lawrence Taylor having won that confrontation with Jennings in that he drove him into the backfield. But still, the support was late arriving and a good game and a first down for the Bears. Well, Rod Russ knows all about Reynolds because Ed is the guy who spent nine years with the New England Patriots. They picked him up on plan B for some relief help here. He gets hurt on this run by Anderson, and we have 1342 left in the first half side of your screen you see how far Lawrence Taylor gets into the bare backfield he's really tied up with Keith Jennings but as far as maintaining the integrity of the line of scrimmage Lawrence Taylor did his job in getting upfield the rest of the Giants Frank not much help Barry Williams goes up from the corner turned it to the inside there's just no pursuit at the point of attack Reynolds assisted off the field Mark Green is now in the backfield number 31 for Chicago first and 10 at the 44. There's the fake to Green. Harbaugh finds a wide open muster. Brad has the first down as he takes it to the 44 of the Giants, and he's tackled there by Collins. So Corey Miller, the linebacker, hurt before. Reynolds shaken up here. Collins made the last hit, and the Giants losing them one by one defensively. Well, sometimes as an offensive coordinator, you can't do anything wrong, and Greg Landry of the Bears right now is doing a masterful job of mixing it up. We've got Anderson blocking. We have Muster blocking. Both of them coming out of the backfield as receivers. This is not stereotyping anybody on the Bear offense. And you have to factor in that Harbaugh, 7 of 8, is being extremely accurate tonight. It's his strongest suit being accurate in the short to medium passes. And the Bears offensively are clicking right now. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. Harbaugh is tipped and caught by Muster. And look at Brad Muster. Tremendous move. He has Morris to block for him. Scores a touchdown. Do you think he was the intended receiver? No, Wendell Davis was the intended <laughs> receiver, and he just batted it up in the air. I agree. I agree. Brad Muster stole the ball. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not your ball, man. <laughs> when it's going your way, it's going your way. Oh, uh, we can listen to Ditka in the press conference after a while. Yeah. Yes, that was a very difficult play to design, but we put that in for certain specifics. Watch this thing from behind. Number 82 is Wendell Davis. And he's on a <laughs> crossing pattern. Muster, who's in the block, had nobody to block, decided to release and literally just stole the ball. Oh, there's some terrible tacking, tackling on the part of the Giants. Mm -hmm. Two Giants had Muster dead to right. They didn't even slow him down. Butler for the point after. That's the Bears' longest play of the season. 44 yards for Muster. <laughs> I thought those Stanford guys played by the rules. <laughs> look, at, look at this tackling. One, two, three, four. Good sign when a player takes off his tape. Lawrence Taylor unwrapping the gloves. And if you're going to judge it from that, and we have not yet received an official word from the Giants' sidelines, Lawrence Taylor giving the impression that he's done. They are running out of bodies. 
14-7 Chicago. Gardaki kicking off. This is taken at the four-yard line. This is Joey Smith, who was upended the last time he ran one back. He comes back through the middle again. Brings it out to the 27. He's tackled there by Eric Wright. Got a confrontation down on the field. A seven-play, 90-yard drive. And Brad Muster stole the ball. Wendell Davis, I'm sure, said thanks for nothing. They got over to the sideline. Yeah, I think I would rather have Muster <laughs> handling that ball after he got it, though, because he did a great job. He, what did Mike say about him last night, Did Because he's not pretty. He just gets it done. Hey, he's big. He looks at times like he's very awkward. But he is a superb football player. Great body balance. Has been for many years. All-American at Stanford. Good receiver. Does it all out there. First down, Giants at their own 28. 12, 10 to go in the half. This is Jared Black. Oh, oh Armstrong. Oh, Armstrong. Armstrong stripping it, stealing it, recovering it. That's the second time so far in this game that Trace Armstrong has slipped the block and gotten quickly into the Giants' backfield. And he was there as Bunch was almost in the process of taking the handoff. Watch how quickly he gets inside Riesenberg, number 72. And Jared Bunch not prepared to be confronted that quickly. He still should have protected the football. Slashing to the inside. And he just hooks that ball and knocks it out. That's sloppy ball handling by Jared Bunch. He should have protected the ball more suitably than that. And Riesenberg, I don't know what he was it's thinking. almost like he didn't have a snap count. Yeah, I don't... He was beaten to the inside for even move. Well, it happened to him in the first quarter as well. Remember when Armstrong made a play on only about the third or fourth play of the game in the backfield. So now the Bears at the giant 25-yard line. And Chicago, for the second time now, has to take a timeout. Blake Lock was down to three. 12.06 left in the half. Bears up by seven. Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff, Monday Night Football Week 3. Lawrence Taylor is back in the game and also for the Giants. Seeing his first action of the night is the nose tackle Eric Howard, who has an injured knee, played sparingly last week, sees his first action tonight. First down, Chicago with the 25. Bears by seven. Little toss to Muster. He's looking to throw. And Muster lost one that is intercepted in the end zone by Greg Jackson. With nary a bear in sight. Well, Mike Ditka has pulled it all out of the book tonight. We have seen the reverse. We've seen the bootleg. We've seen the fake punt. Now we see the pass from Muster. I believe that's his first with and the Bears. We've seen uh, it ought to be his last. Neil Anderson do it, but I mean there was a bear in the area. That was a good shot of the area. <laughs> it's a whiteout. Brad Muster under pressure makes one of the worst passes in NFL history. We well, talked about him being able to do a lot of things. This oh. is not one of them. <laughs> he might have been trying to throw it out of bounds, but he didn't come close. Picked off by Jackson. Fortuitous for the Giants. From the 20-yard line, Sims hits Cross, and Cross fights his way for an 11-yard pickup and a first down up to the 31-yard line. Howard Cross came in tonight with eight receptions. He had six last week. And what turned out to be an amazing comeback for the Giants after being down 34 to nothing. They got it back 34-28. Cross was one of the principals. And a turnaround in that second half against Dallas, but not quite enough. First down at the 31-yard line, 11-25 left in the half, 14-7 Chicago. Hampton. Boy, he's fun to watch. Up to the 47-yard line. Those are moves you just don't see from a big guy like a Hampton. I mean, that is a, I mean, that's a little man's move. He's so quick. Plants the foot. He bounces off it left, right. Such good moves. And one of the great tacklers in the history of this game, Mike Singletary, he's all lined up. Takes a shot. He didn't even get a shot. But look at this move. Little move to the outside. Stretches it for two or three more yards. He's the offense for the Giants. First and 10, 47 yard line. Sims swing out to Bunch, and Bunch fights his way to the 50 and is ridden out of bounds by John Roper after a gain of three. And then is 
activity on the sideline, but no flag. Oh, well, yeah, there is a flag. Yes, there was. Yeah, Marcus Ingram, Marcus Paul, and Ingram. Mark Ingram. Ingram throws a right hand. I saw him throw the punch, and if that's the one the back judge or the field judge saw, that's the one that's going to be called. Paul and Ingram were locked up, and Ingram throws an overhand right that I saw plainly from up here. You know, when you start marking something down on a card, there could be an ejection here as well. They could be throwing either Ingram threw a big or one. one or the other out of the game here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 82 offense, 15 yard penalty. It was an elbow and a disqualifying foul. He's yes. out of there. Repeat first down. Wow. Not a smart play by Mark Ingram. Well, Mark was questionable coming into this game with a hip pointer, but that really hurts. Well, it, Ingram came in after the play and hit Marcus Paul. And then when Paul kind of turned and confronted him, wham. In comes the elbow. He you're going to throw one, you better make the contact, too. I mean, it, all this did was it just attract the official. Mark Ingram gone with 10.36 to go in the half, with the Giants losing several bodies defensively. Now one man offensively, 15-yard penalty. It is first and 25 at the 35-yard line. Rose got to get the clock straightened out. And they want the uh, play clock to go back to 25. We're in Chicago. Bears with a long drive in the first quarter. The Giants matched that. Game was tied at seven. Then on a wacky play, Brad Muster on a pass not intended for him, made the catch, took it in, 44 yards for a touchdown. 14 to seven Chicago, and the Giants have it first and 25 at their own 35. Sims throws, and that's incomplete. Intended for Chris Callaway at the 50-yard line, second and 25. So the loss of Mark Ingram tightens things up offensively for the Giants. Even though McCaffrey was their leading receiver coming into tonight's game, Mark Ingram is a big part of their passing offense. And an 0-2 football team desperately trying to win a game on the road can ill afford to lose a talented receiver like Ingram. He was their leading receiver last year. As you look at Ed McCaffrey. And the go-to receiver also. You get a tough situation. They always went to Ingram. He's gone. On second and 25, they run a draw to Hampton. And that nets about six, setting up third and 19 at the 41-yard line. Next week, we will take the show to Kansas City. For years, this has been one of the great rivalries in the NFL. The Raiders. And this is a, a, a vital game for them. 0-3 right now. Marinovich, the new quarterback. Dickerson and Allen, and you're looking at Howie Long right there against the Kansas City Chiefs. 2-1, Christian McCoy and company on Monday Night Football next week. Third down, call it 17 at the 41-yard line. Four-man rush. Sim throws. Callaway makes the catch at the 46, but he's short of the first down. Bain covering on the play. They needed 17 and got about 13. Fourth down. Well, that's an effective job by Callaway of digging up a, a pass out that appeared to be low. Talk about coming back to your quarterback to make the reception. He hits that up for the yardage. It would have got the first down, Dan, and it was underthrown by Phil Sims and watch him come back and battle for it. Yeah, pretty like Callaway. They picked him up plan B from the Steelers. That is a fine effort. Sean Landetta ready to punt to Nell Wolford is back to receive at the 10 yard line. Landetta standing at his own 40. It's going to bounce inside the five and the Giants can't down it. That's Renee Thompson, their special teams whiz, who couldn't down it. And the Bears will get it at the 20-yard line. 8.38 left first half. Soldier Field in Chicago. It's the Bears by seven.
official day of summer in shirt sleeves. Happy autumn tomorrow. It was a, uh, a wet day here in Chicago, and luckily they had the field covered. We were all down there prior to the start of the game, and the field is in remarkably good condition, I think, for how soggy it's been here in the prior 24 hours. Slow footing, but that's the way it normally is at Soldier Field, except for guys like Neil Anderson, but this time he's written down at the 20-yard line by Perry Williams. And we talked about the Giants trying to avoid going 0-3, and also without overemphasizing the importance of this for the Bears, I think Chicago finds themselves right now in a uh, maybe a little bit tougher division than they might have thought at the beginning of the season. I think that's too, but tonight they are running the football. That's what they came in here to do. Every time you talk to Mike Ditke, he says, I want to run the football. They believe in it. They're averaging, what, about seven yards a pop, and a lot of it uh, is bad tackling on the part of the Giants. Mm -hmm. Al, you make a good point when you talk about the NFC Central now. I mean, it used to be just the Bears and the Vikings, and now the Lions are, are legit, and, and, and you see uh, Green Bay, uh, which is still struggling, but Tampa Bay, mm -hmm. Sam Weiss uh, off to a hot start down there. Mm -hmm. Second and 11, and the catch is made. That's the tight end, Keith Jennings, who takes it out to the 32-yard line. He is stopped by Pepper Johnson. Jennings has really done a fine job for the Bears. Cap Bozo went down a year ago. He was his career was over as tight end. Then James Thornton was hurt early this year. Along comes Keith Jennings. He's big, but he was a former wide receiver at Clemson. There is turned Thornton. into a tight end. That's Thornton standing on mm -hmm. the Bears sideline, and he will be back talking to him before the game after his four weeks. He's already running and feels very good about being back after his mandatory four games missing. First down at the 32, seven minutes to go in the half, 14-7 Bears. Pressure on Harbaugh, gets it away, and it's intercepted by Everson Wolf, but he is oh. stripped of the ball at the 23-yard line. It's and loose at the 21-yard line, and who's got the football? The flag is, or is down, down the field. There's a penalty back at the 37, among other things. Uh, we have major things to sort out here. We've got an interception, a fumble. Who recovered? Carl Banks did for the Giants, and a penalty. But I don't know whether it was on the pass or on the run back. Well, let's start with what we know for sure. What a play by Everson Walls. Outstanding anticipation, jumping in front of the receiver. The timing was impeccable. He's almost magic that way, and it's been that way his entire career. What did Bill Parcells used to say about him? He just seems to attract the football. I think the Giants who are going to get the ball Illegal because the Bears defense is coming out. Number 52, after the interception, 10-yard penalty, first down. It's his 55th career mm -hmm. interception. So Walls with a pick, Giants get it back. <laughs> Made it look easy, didn't it? Yeah, he, he just read it, but he's looking into the quarterback, and you saw it. Harbaugh was locked up with the tight end with his own eyes, and Walls is very quick. He's not, doesn't have the big speed, but he is so quick, and he reads the play so well. Darren Lewis forced the fumble. Carl Banks recovered it. Pepper Johnson with the illegal block that takes it back to the 47. The Giants have it with 6.52 to go in the half. Sims asking for quiet. I don't think he's going to get it. Mm. McCaffrey takes it to the 26-yard line where he is stopped by Donnell Wolford. Boy, but Donnell Wolford gave McCaffrey, who is not known as a speedster, about 8 or 10 yards. And Sims, with a good pump over to the left side, came back to McCaffrey and big play for a first down. Neither one of these teams with blazing no. speed at the outside receiver position. It's, uh, it's shocking to see either team playing very far off an intended receiver. First down at the 26-yard line. Hands and great tackle in the backfield by Chris Zorich. Second year from Notre Dame. alternate those inside people the two tackles Zarich and McMichael and William Perry and they keep him fresh in there and a terrific move by Zarich here well the Bears are doing a lot of angling and slanting up front and it is causing some problems on the Giants offensive line we've seen how effective Armstrong has been a couple times that time it's Zorich who slants and gets through cleanly 
Second and 12 at the 28 yard line. Back side. Ken, look out from behind. It is an incomplete pass. His arm was coming forward. He was hit by Richard Dent. It's an incomplete pass. Dent thought he forced the fumble, but the official is right there. Howard wrote a call it. I would say if you're playing the Chicago Bears, Dan, one thing you always want to be aware of, where is Richard Dent if you're going to put the football in the air? And I think this was a very good call by the official. Oh, and a penalty against the Bears. But it was a good call, I believe, by the official in saying that Sims' arm was in Illegal forward motion. Contact, number 24 defense, five yard penalty, first down. Well, that against Richard Fain of the Chicago Bears. All right, let's watch it in the backfield. There's Stent, an attempted cut at the line of scrimmage. And I think that's a good call by the official in ruling it an incomplete pass. But again, the Giants get a good break as mm. the drive is kept alive. Oh. Oh, what is Richard Dent doing there in pulling back the head of Phil Sims? That's that's a, that's kind of cheap. He got away with it. Here's yeah. Hampton on first down after the illegal contact. He takes it to the 14. That's a loose ball. Giants seem to think that they have it. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. that's. <laughs> Rodney Hampton is the guy at the bottom of the pile. That's not a surprise that the Giants think they have it. I think the Bears think they have it too here. Mm -hmm. And I think they're ruling this ball down. Much ado about nothing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, nifty running on the part of Rodney Hampton. Such quick feet at the line of scrimmage, and yet he is always moving forward with it. Very unsettling for a tackle. You can't really set up to make the tackle there as Singletary. He is picked off with a good block by Bunt. Hmm. Well, the ball was loose yeah. before Hampton was down. Second and one. He picks up the first down. He takes it to the 10-yard line. Tackled by Singletary. Singletary. See where they spotted it. The first and goal or first and 10 just outside the 10-yard line. And the Bears are after that football. The yeah, Bears no. are sensing that it's been on the ground a lot tonight by both teams. And you can see them being very aggressive in attempting to tackle the ball as much as they're attempting to tackle the ball carry. Katie Bears and Giants football, though, isn't it? Played on the grass, slugging it out, running the football. A little extracurricular activity after almost every play. Bears and Giants football. First and goal. The nose of the ball is right on the stripe at the 10. Here's Buck inside the five. Takes it to the two-yard line. It'll be second and goal. He's tackled by Paul and Carrier. Oh. Ray Hanley said he wanted to see much more carrying the football, and he is showing him tonight. In the first two games, Bunch did not carry the football. Rodney Hampton carried it every time for the line of scrimmage except twice. The two times that make it carried it. Tonight, we're seeing a little bit of Bunch. Giants perfect every time they've had the ball in what they call the red zone. They've scored a touchdown. They're trying to make it eight for eight now. And they have had good blocking on the offensive line. That last time, Oates and Cratch and Elliott all strong blocking on the left side. And Otis Anderson, 24, is in the game. First action he has seen this season. Hampton the tailback. Anderson the lead blocker. Hampton lunges. Is he in? No signal so. yet. No. Didn't make it. Third and goal. Singletary and Perry in on the hit. Talking about that offensive line, and it's kind of a makeshift offensive line, too, Dan, as Bob Kratz has moved over to the left side. Eric Moore has gone over to the right guard. And it's certainly a different offensive line. They're doing well. Well, they went right at William Perry that time, and William Perry did not give any ground at all. You see Perry standing there? They didn't move William Perry back an inch, and I don't think that that's the guy that I would go after in a goal line situation. You might be a little more tempted to try the offensive right side of things. Anderson still in there as the blocker. Bunch is in motion. Hampton the tailback. Rodney Hampton squeezes through. That's touchdown. Yeah, he's in. Touchdown. And the surge that time belonged to the Giants. Hey, that was a little bit of in your face, too. Yep. That came right back with the same play. That time just a good read by Hampton carried a little to the outside, and that's sort of like, hey guys, we're going to pound this football into the end zone. And the blue shirts of the Chicago Bears, the vast majority of them were a yard or two back into the end zone. Credit to the Giants again with a with an excellent offensive line surge. So Everson Walls with the remarkable interception and the Giants cash in, going 47 yards, eight for eight now in the red zone for New York this year. Far to try to tie it. 
splits the uprights, and we have 218. And there's the man who helped set it up. Wild and wacky thus far in Chicago tonight. The game tied 14-14, 218 to go in the half. The half teams trading touchdowns. Game tied 14-14. You know, Ray Hanley, you can imagine, under uh, a lot of pressure in New York, taking over Super Bowl Championship Club 8-8 eight eight last year. The, um, how should I put it, the sometimes sagacious and very often loose cannon Buddy Ryan had a most interesting comment on NBC's pregame show yesterday talking about the Giants situation. He said, Parcells got too much credit and Hanley's getting too much blame. Well, there's no question that Buddy Ryan never cared much for Parcells to begin with. <laughs> well, I don't think there's any doubt that the that the football team that Ray Hanley inherited is not as talent rich as as the Giants teams uh, that were so dominating in, in, in the 80s. I mean, this is a team that is aging, and a lot of the youth that is expected to take those aging veterans' place has not yet matured. Mm -hmm. and they got five guys starting on their offense that are 30 years or or more. And this is, uh, if not the oldest, one of the oldest offensive units in all the pro football. Well, how about the defensive units? I mean, Taylor's 33. Yeah. I mean, Walls is 32. Williams is 31. Banks, Marshall, both are 30. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Touchback on Barr's <coughs> kickoff. Among the crowd here, well, sitting right. right in the middle of the crowd is the Democratic presidential nominee, Bill if, Clinton. If he has a Nielsen home, we'd prefer he was home. <laughs> yes. Among those looking on, getting a close-up view, and he's uh, the guest of the mayor of Chicago, Richard Daly. And he's seen a good game thus far. Tied at 14, ball at the 20-yard line, first and 10, Chicago. Here's Neil Anderson picking up three. Lawrence Taylor is the first guy to make contact with him, and then Johnson helps to finish him off, and that's going to take us to the two-minute warning. 120 seconds remaining in the opening half at Soldier Field in Chicago. What a very nice night. Tied 14-14. Soldier Field in Chicago. Game tied 14-14. Two minutes to go. Opening half, Chicago with its second down and seven at the 23-yard line. Remember, the Bears have only one timeout left. They've already used two. There's a little shovel pass. And that's an incomplete pass, a little shovel to Gentry, and since it's a forward pass, it's simply an incomplete pass and no fumble. A little dangerous, though, because Lawrence Taylor was right in the middle of it. Had that been batted in the air at all, he would have had a good opportunity for an interception. There was just mistiming between Gentry and Harbaugh. It looked like a play that was well blocked at the point of attack. See Pepper Johnson falling out of there. Lawrence has to take the outside, and... And Gentry looked like he just was a little bit wide, and then Harbaugh threw it too far back to his inside. That play had a chance to be something. The timing was lacking. Third and seven now at the 23-yard line. Harbaugh throwing, and that's incomplete. Ron Morris can't make the catch. Probably wouldn't have mattered. He was only at the 26 with coverage anyway. Taylor is uh, hobbling a little bit. Walls in on the coverage, and the Giants are going to get the ball back. Is this the first time the Bears have been three and out? Take a look at Lawrence again. If you were with us earlier, he went down. The Giants were very concerned. Hurt his right shoulder, and you can see he's still in pain. Well, for a while, it looked like he was coming out of the game, taking his tape off, but he's gutting it out, trying to play. Gardaki's punt, a fair catch, called for fumble and recovered by Meggett, who pounces on it. At the 40, so Lawrence still in obvious pain, and if you joined us late, that happened on the very first series of the game. Sprain right shoulder. No and one has ever questioned the physical toughness of Lawrence Taylor. Every time he's been hurt, he's been back well before he was expected to be back, and I'm, I don't think I'm going too far out on a limb, guys, to no say way. that that most men, I don't think, would be playing under the conditions that he's suffering through right now. We have a great piece on him at halftime, along as well as Mike Singletary, both of them talking about each other. Giants have all of their timeouts. They're at the 40-yard line. 144 remaining. First half. There's a fake to Hampton, who then goes into the pattern and makes the catch, but he's surrounded by a trio and then a quartet of Bears to knock them down at the 43-yard line. 
And with the time remaining and the timeouts and factor in that number 11 is the quarterback, more than enough time for the Giants at the very least to get into field goal range. Second down and seven at the 43 yard line. Ten. He just throws that one away. Nobody was open, and uh, the nearest receiver was Callaway, but he was covered by Wolford. It'll be third down. Good pass block, you know. Sims had all the time in the world to release the football. You're looking at Jeff Hostetler. Al already talked about how he was scheduled to be the starter, heard in in training camp, the second preseason game, and then he came back and was hurt again in the final preseason game. Couldn't play against San Francisco. Thought he was going to be the start in the second game against Dallas. Was terribly disappointed and has accepted it reluctantly, and Sims has remained the starter, and the controversy continues in New York, and I suppose it'll never go away. Third down and seven at the 43-yard line. Shotgun, Megat flanking Sims, and Phil's going to take a timeout here. The play clock was down to one in the third and seven, and he didn't like what he saw as he looked over the defense. He had a timeout to burn. They still have two left, 106 remaining in the opening half. Packers, Lawrence Taylor, Mike Singletary, we'll hear from them at halftime, and also an interesting comment from Ray Handley in regard to the future of the Giants coming up at halftime. Third and seven. From the 43, Sims throwing on an out pattern catch made by Callaway. Brings it in, has the first down. He needed seven, he got eight. First down for the Giants. And by going out of bounds, the clock stops. The Giants don't have to use the timeout. Still two remaining. And so McMichael, he got right into Sims' face, but still able to release. And pick up the first down. 101 remaining in the half. And about another 20 yards is what the Giants need to get into field goal range. Mm -hmm. Megan is too high and incomplete. And then Baker was there. He was almost able to come down with it. Douglas covering on the play. It'll be second down. Giants kicker Matt Barr. Best is 54 yards, but he kicked that off the artificial surface last year against Houston. And this is a natural surface. Much more difficult to get that yardage and just off the fingertips of the five foot seven Dave Meggett. I think Meggett went back to Huddle and reminded Phil that he's five seven, not six seven. <laughs> <laughs> well, Matt Barr walking the sidelines. Second and ten. Barr hasn't attempted a field goal yet this year. Sims throws to McCaffrey. McCaffrey fights his way for a first down, and he's out of bounds at the 37-yard line, thrown out by Marcus Paul, and the clock stops with 48 ticks. McCaffrey has been the Giants' leading receiver coming into tonight, and he's very good when he gets down into what they call the red zone. Very good underneath, not gifted with blazing speed, but he's big. He's 6'5 and 215-pounder, and that was fine blocking by not only the offensive line, but the pickup by the backs because the Bears were in a blitz. And they gave Sims time to deliver the ball to the crossing captain, Captain. I guess there's a very patient drive being executed by Phil Sims. First and ten. Again, keep in mind, Ingram thrown out of the game. So they have to go to the McCaffrey's and the Callaways. And this pass is dropped by Megan. It was right there. Again, that little is not a pick, but you have crossing receivers and try to get the defensive backs to collide. And... That's what the Giants were doing over the left side. Well, I think I, I think that was a case that Meggett sensed how close Maurice Douglas was to him and became distracted and tried to turn upfield again. It's the old story of taking it back upfield before you have put the ball away. But Maurice Douglas was close enough, and that's a lack of concentration by Meggett. You saw Charlie Weiss, the uh, Giants assistant coach, signaling the plays in. There is Weiss. He gets the plays from Jim Fossil, the offensive coordinator. Second down and 10. At the 38. Go Rick, go Rick. Ten. And that's incomplete, and that's great coverage. Callaway never had a chance, and uh, Richard Payne was right there with him. Richard Payne was called for a penalty a little earlier in the game, and he popped somebody, and probably shouldn't have been a penalty, but he is... Been providing some excellent coverage for these Bears. He's a 
plan B pickup, and the Bears don't do a whole lot of that, and they got a good one when they picked him up. And he knew he was locked up one-on-one. -on -one. The Bears came with a blitz on the other side, and Fain knew from the get-go that he was out there all by himself, and that was a superlative job of coverage for a guy who knew that he had to play it close. Pressure on Tim's that time from Tim Ryan. Big play here, third down and 10 at the 38-yard line. Bears rush five. McCaffrey gets buried at the 32 by Carrier. So now you've got a fourth down and five at the 32. You're looking at about a 49-yard field goal. The Giants still have two timeouts left. Why, why are they allowing the clock to run yeah. like this? I guess unless they are just automatically going to go for the field goal. Seems to be the yeah. uh, the case here because they're going to let the clock tick down. That's exactly what they're going to do. McCaffrey again. Picking up the yard three seconds least that got them to a thin range yeah. of where Matt Barr realistically can make it. It's going to be a tough kick for Matt Barr off the natural surface. That had to be a close call for Ray Handley. I mean, he had to consider that he is right on the fringe of Barr's field goal range. It had to be tempting to, to make a stab at getting the first down. Yeah, but he, he never hesitated, and it was Handley who did the clock management even in the Parcells regime, right. so he knows exactly what he wanted to do. He stops the clock. With uh, he said three, but they let it kick down to two, and now Barr will attempt a 49-yard field goal. And I think since he has let the clock tick down, I don't think we have to consider anything like a fake field goal. Jeff Hostetler, of course, is the holder. Giants are trying to take the lead for the first time this season. This will be interesting to see how good a footing Barr gets here on this kick. Another reminder that it has been raining here in Chicago. It has not rained during the game, and while the field was covered, it is in no way a hard, fast track. And it is a air. little bit, a little bit soft. And let's see the plant put a bar. Ball in 50 yards. Hostetler will put it right down on the 40. And Barr's kick is no good. Didn't miss by much. Have a look. They waited and waited as he appeared to have the distance, but not the accuracy. Yes, Mr. Soldier Field in Chicago as we start the second half. Bears coming into this game with a record of one and one. The last second went over Detroit, a loss to New Orleans. The Giants 0-2 as Gardaki kicks off for the Bears, and it's a good deep kick. Joey Smith will down it in the end zone. Uh, <laughs> providing a little bit of drama. And it'll be first and ten of the 20-yard line. And the game is even, and uh, the stats are relatively even, too, through the first 30 minutes of action, as you will see. 200 yards for the Bears and 180 total yards for the Giants. And you see that the Bears with two turnovers, but one of them resulted in seven points. The interception by Iverson Walls ended up being a touchdown for the Giants. I think one good thing for the Giants to keep in mind as this game goes along is that Barr had the distance on that 50-yarder. Mm-hmm. Hampton. That may come into play in a tight ball game. And when you consider that this is his 14th year in the league off of, you know, not a, you know, not a perfect kicking surface, that was that was quite a boot by Matt Barr. Mm -hmm. And the Giants have to be happy with the way, there is Matt Barr, with the way their offensive line has worked out. Bob Kratz has moved over to take William Roberts' place over the left side, and Eric Moore, who was a longtime holdout, didn't sign until the first week of the season, is doing pretty well at right guard. On second and four, here's Jared Bunch, and he gets tackled by Richard Dent, and he lunges forward for a gain of one. It'll be third down and three at the 27-yard line. And again, the slanting by the Bear defensive line. They're gambling and taking some sharp moves to the inside are paying off. We've seen Zorich do it. We've seen Armstrong do it twice, and this time it's Richard Dent who knifes to the inside. Elliott doesn't have a shot at it. And the Bear defensive line is, is really doing a good job of penetrating, gambling, and stunning to the inside. Third and three at the 27-yard line. First drive of the second half. Here is Dave Maggot picking up eight yards 
to the 35-yard line, tackled by Fain. First down, Giants. They make it not all that healthy in the first two games. Had a very sore foot in the first game, a sore neck last week against Dallas, but he's into the night. A fairly healthy Dave Megan. He can do a lot of things for you. You can put him in the backfield, work him out of there as a runner, as we just saw, or you can use him as a receiver. In this league, when your rushing average starts with a five, mm -hmm. you're effective. His first carry of the game, his third of the season. First and ten of the 35-yard line. There's the fake to Hampton. And Stephen Baker makes his third reception of the night. And that's enough for another giant first down. Baker again on just a little deep out there. We've Giants flooding both backs to the left with play action. That usually would get you man for man on the backside, and that's what they got. They got Baker man for man against Donnell Wolford. Wolford respecting what speed Baker has, backs off and plays again. Too deep down. Respecting his speed a lot. <laughs> well, we saw him earlier do the same thing. He did the same thing to McCaffrey. Played way off. Baker has good speed, but not great speed. And, and Wolford is playing, I think, maybe a yard or two off the ball. There's Stent again. Hampton. Good move by him. Escapes Hampton. him and picks up six. Turns the loss into a gain. Roper makes the hit. Second down and four. Airship Shamu, the SeaWorld blimp. Ooh, with effects. Yeah. Overlooking Soldier Field in Chicago tonight. After a, a full day and night of rain and a lot of fog earlier today, it's cleared up, providing some pretty pictures for us. What a great old stadium. Yeah, so many memories here at Soldier Field. It goes way back into the early 30s. Second and four. And they tried to get it into cross, and the perfectly timed hit, Marcus Paul, right there. Making contact as the ball got there, creating the incomplete pass. It'll be third down. Good play by Paul, who is in there for the injured Sean Gale. Talked about the Giants losing Myron Guyton at their safety. And that is good timing by Marcus Paul, who filled in for Sean Gale a year ago and did a good job. So you don't lose a whole lot with Marcus Paul. Sean Gale perhaps a little more of a leader back there. Third and four for the Giants. Opening drive, third quarter, game tied 14-14, 11-48, left in the period. Simmons from the gun. Four-man rush. And Baker again. Baker keeps running those out patterns, and that's the fourth time Sims hits him. First down. Good protection for Sims once again, Dan. It was good protection. Look at the alley that Phil has looking off to the left side. The Giants flooded that side. Lemuel Stinson, the cornerback, with the coverage on Baker. And while his coverage a little tighter than his counterpart on the other side, Danell Wolford, still it gave Baker the room he needed. And Phil Sims, he, he sat, he watched, and when he got his opportunity, this man still has a lot of football left. Here's Jared Bunch. The number one pick last year out of Michigan takes it to the 31-yard line. McMichael and Singletary converge on the hit. What Sims, the third oldest player, the third oldest active player in the NFL? Set the third only to uh, Steve DeBerg at Tampa Bay and Jackie Slater, the longtime Ram tackle. It'll be 37, November the 3rd. That was a good move by Bunch. He could have lost a couple of yards on that, and he very wisely turned it back to the inside and turned a whole lot of nothing into a couple of yards. Second down, call at eight at the 32-yard line. Short drop, McCaffrey, and he goes nowhere. And a flag is down. A marker is down. And I think they're going to get. I think they're going to get Richard Dent. Richard Dent was all over Phil Sims. Well, he got away with one before. Yeah, we saw him actually hooking. Sims helmet and pulling it back and roughing the passer against the Bears. Bears continue, as you pointed out, Dan, to deal. Look at him crisscross in the middle of the line. See Dent coming inside of Perry, and they're doing that, I'm sure, because of the, the new offensive line, or at least the new structure of the offensive line, and there you saw the call against Dent. You got this year, you better be careful when you get near the quarterback. They are very quick with solution, and they should be, because they could have been going down in ever-increasing numbers. And 
that you could see by the look on on Richard Dent's face that he knew he had absolutely no defense for what he had done. He could see the ball being thrown. It was obvious that Sims did not have the ball and it really whirly bird him on a 360 and throwing to the ground will bring the flag every time. Giant first and 10 at the 15 yard line. This drive began at the New York 20. Hanson. Armstrong and others tackle him after a pickup of two. Bears have had some costly penalties tonight. That's the, the fourth giant first down by way of a Chicago penalty this evening. Getting down in the area where McCaffrey has been a major factor in the Giants passing game. The big six foot five second year man. And here they are inside the 20 again where they've been perfect this season. Eight times inside the opponent 20. And eight thrusts into the end zone. Second and eight. Then throwing a diving catch is made yeah. for the touchdown by Baker. Nine for nine. Hey, that wasn't bad coverage. That ball was perfectly thrown. The mule Stinson, who that time was playing up on Baker very tight, but that ball was perfectly thrown. And when you see Baker go to that spot in the end zone, you think back to the Super Bowl. Sam stands in there under pressure. Stenson right in front of him and had to be put right there. Yeah, there's no way I don't there's no way to defense that pass. When a man catches a ball and lands one foot inbound and diving and diving very little a defensive back can do when the ball's thrown low and away the way it was delivered to Baker from Sims. His nickname is the touchdown maker and that's exactly what he's done and for the first time this season the New York Giants have a lead. As they take the opening kickoff of the second half and march 80 yards and now bar to kick off the liner taken at the four. This is Mark Green at the 20 up to the 30 yard line. Bears have it for the first time in the second half. 925 remaining in the third New York by seven is the Bears special teams Maven. He's uh, to Chicago what uh, Renee Thompson would be to the Giants. But as you can see shelved for a while special teams Maven. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, not a bad wide receiver also. Yep. Right underneath man Maven. <laughs> the Bears have it at the 29 yard line as Neil Anderson swings to the right gets run down by Greg Jackson. Take a look at the numbers on the Giants scoring drive as uh, they took over at the 20 and marched 80 yards. Baker made three catches on the drive. And if you joined us late, as the Giants are on defense here, Leonard Marshall, arthroscopic knee surgery not here. Eric Howard has played sparingly tonight, but he's in there at the moment. Corey Miller, backup linebacker, hurt before in the first half. In fact, badly sprained ankle will not return. Lawrence Taylor sprained shoulder on the first series of the game but sucking it up as always and in there. But it's a banged up defensive unit. Second and five from the 35. Harbaugh under pressure and the throw is low because of that pressure. It musters feet and the Giants can thank Pepper Johnson for his pass rush. Uh, he just barely pulled it up. The referee almost pulled that flag on Pepper Johnson, but he reached down and pulled Jim Harbaugh up and got away with it. Well, the pass intended for Mustard. Guys, this is a very interesting thing here. Darren Nelson, the all-time leading rusher in the history of Stanford University. Muster second. We saw Bardell of the Cleveland Browns now third. You have any idea who's fourth? Think about it for a minute. Uh, pretty astonishing. Pretty astonishing. Next, next one down the line fourth leading rusher in Stanford history Jim Plunkett <laughs> that would be a sign Frankie Albert <laughs> third and six Harbaugh and he had that one deflected Norm Stanley fourth down Carl Banks is the guy who came in and forced the issue fourth leading rusher as we revealed it da -da -da -da. Da -da -da -da. he's here tonight Ray yeah. Hanley the Giants coach Number four. He held the record until Darren Nelson had his great career in the late 70s. Well, he doesn't, just doesn't look like a running back, does he? No. Well, looks more like a guard. 
Here's Gardaki's left-footed kick. A, a mini fair catch call for the 23-yard line. Leggett putting up his hand for just a moment. And a flag is down. We've got a penalty marker back at the 42-yard line. So we'll put the band away for just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Notice the fade. Yes. You know, that just got, <laughs> slow just kind of slowly yes. disappears. <laughs> you know, rather than just wave your baton and bring it to an abrupt halt, <laughs> nice, a, nice, nice mm, segue into silence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Howard Rowe is the uh, the white hat. Ditka in his 11th season, Handley in his second, and uh, see what the call is here. It was. Fourth down and five. Some sort of an offsides would make it close, but it doesn't yeah. look like we're going to see uh, any sort of a change here. Post possession foul, number 75 holding on a receiving team. Ten yard penalty, first down. So the Giants will have it with 838. All right, Mike, go finish this one off. Minutes and 38 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a look at the quarterback head to head here, the comparison. Giants up by seven. You see Sims, 15 of 21, Harbaugh, 9 of 15. Interesting about Harbaugh, though, remember early in this game, he was seven of eight. So since that time, it has been not all peaches and cream for Jim Harbaugh. Here's Lewis Tillman's first carry of the game. He's in there for the first time, and he picks up three, gets out to the 21 yard line. Harbaugh's been in for just that one series thus far in the second half. Sims led the Giants down the field with the third quarter kickoff. Now in Harbaugh's defense, take that last series of the Bears. He was under heavy pressure the last two passes. The last one was actually his arm was hit while he was throwing. That goes on the books as an incomplete pass. The Giants have been more successful in gaining penetration and pressure in the Bears backfield here in the early part of the second half. Second down call at eight. Sims for McCaffrey. And that's incomplete. McCaffrey had gotten behind Fain, who was covering, and Zorich forced the issue with a good pass rush. Number 97. Chris Zorich grew up here in Chicago. What a thrill it must be for him to play for the Bears. Of course, played at Notre Dame, but a Chicago boy mm -hmm. has to be a dream come true. Four wide receivers and mega, so five live receivers for the Giants. And again, if you join us late, Mark Ingram, one of their top receivers, thrown out of the game in the first half. On third down, Megat makes the catch underneath. Megat has to get out to the 20 three-yard line and Meggett may have squirmed his way for a first down. I think he's going to get it with this spot. He tried to <laughs> squirm his way out but finally he just put his head down. He's not yeah. all that big and he just got down low drove into the Bears and he's very close to it. They're going to bring out the chains but I think uh, by the way the ball is spotted it looks like a first down for the New York Giants. Look at this move now. Plants yeah. that foot. Nowhere to go. Okay put the head down. Bull for it. That's a good awareness mm -hmm. of where you are on the field. Any sort of a juke move where he loses that forward progress and he doesn't make the first down. We're not conceding that he has it, but I thought he had. Yeah. Oh yeah, by considerable. Yep. I guess that means you have it when the chain doesn't even come into the picture. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Pretty good indication. <laughs> We were really ready, though. <laughs> At the 23-yard line, first down. It's kind of a uh, useless measurement when the uh, chain does not even come into the picture. Here is Lewis Tillman breaking a tackle, taking it out to the 30-yard line. He gains 70, is stopped by Richard Fain. A remarkable difference in the way that Tillman will carry the football from that of Rodney Hampton. Tillman is a slasher, and he just plants his foot. In many cases, he'll look for somebody to bowl over. And Good blocking. Just that. Good blocking on the left side. Bob Cratchit, left guard, continues to play an outstanding game. Jumbo Elliott wraps up Richard Dent. 
Good lead block by Bunch outside on Cox. And the Giants have a whole lot of white shirts heading in the right direction. The Bears, on that play at least, back on their heels. Second and a long three from the 30. Here's Jared Bunch, and he pulls for six, and that's another New York first down up to the 36-yard line. I'll tell you, it's, uh, New Orleans was able to run the football pretty good against the Bears a week ago, but nothing like the Giants have started to do here. And again, we keep reminding you the rather radical change of that offensive line as Bob Kratz went from right guard to left guard. Eric Moore late arriving as a into training camp but over to the right side and they are dominating right now 108 total yards rushing and maybe even more important over a four yard average 4.3 yards per carry normally in a given year the league average is 4.0 10 going deep there's a flag thrown and the catch is made by Baker Baker is saying that he was interfered with and he's right Bain was the guy covering on the play. Fain up there very tight and Baker gave him a little move and as he went by Fain interfered with him. Stephen Baker came into this game with one catch in the Holding first two games of the season. Defense number 24 penalty decline pass completed first down. Fain's had a tough night. They gave him a bad call early in the game and I don't know this would <laughs> to do much to get the call that might have happened a little earlier for Fane's sake I hope it happened earlier because it sure didn't happen there that is six catches for 97 yards and a touchdown for Stephen Baker Stillman is the sole setback he stays in the block and it's Almost intercepted by Singletary. Give Richard Dent the credit. He looped around the inside and came right into Phil Simms' face. Phil upset that his blocking broke down up front. Dent again on that loop. He ran the loop the last time and was called for roughing against Sims. This time he comes up the middle, and Phil really has hardly any chance at all. Actually hit in the process of throwing. And look at, again, look at Dent throw Sims to the ground. And then they continue Almost. to try to confuse the Giants offensive line with that dealing on the inside. You saw it again there. That time it worked. That would have been big news. Singletary hasn't had an interception in about five years. Second and ten from the 26. Flag. Hillman. Richard Dent that time took the underneath. And I think they're going to call John Elliott the left tackle for holding. And that's really kind of a bogus call. Dent just goes on all fours and actually cuts Elliott's legs out from underneath him. Holding number 76 offense. Yeah. 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. Now watch Dent there. There's Dent in the middle of 95. He's just going to knife underneath. See him go underneath. And he's really just on the ground and he's driving underneath. And what's Elliott supposed to do with his right arm? It's one of those deals that you give Dent credit for forcing the issue, but you know, it's, it's not, there's not much that Big Jumbo could do about it. Richard Dent, you got to give that man credit. He is forcing the issue here in the third quarter. That sets him back to the 36-yard line. Creates a second and 20. McCaffrey is the man in motion. And Sims throws over the middle. That catch is made by the tight end Howard Cross. He takes it to the 27, which is about the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to set up a third, and let's call it 11. And Cross is limping as he heads back to the Giants home. The, you're going to have to take a number for the hot tub on these two teams tomorrow. Well, the Giants could not have a bye week at a better time because they get one next week. That was a good call, though. You throw underneath, you get 10 yards. You need 20, you get 10, and you... Now you're looking at the third and 20 rather than a risky play. We're rather third and 10 now. And we bring in your four wide outs with great success on the outside. A veteran quarterback does that. He lets everybody participate in the passing game. Bill Sims throwing it to six different people. Third down and 11. They have to get it to the 16. And the catch is made yes. at the 14 by Baker. He's been doing that all night. His seventh catch of the game, a sensational night for Stephen Baker. Uh, not such a good night for Lemuel Stenson. Backed off again, but again, Sims was right on target. 
I, I don't know what Stinson could have done about that. Not much. Granted, the cushion was there, but this is that low and away hard ball by Phil Sims. When a receiver leaves his feet to make that catch, I, I don't know how you defend against that. You can't break in front. Nobody's that good. Phil Sims is having one of those nights that he's had so many of in his career. He is just right on it. Baker living on that sideline short as Jared Bunch takes the ball to the 11-yard line to the second and seven. Jim Fossil is the man in the glasses uh, and the shirt. It's been just a horrible week for him. His father was killed in an automobile accident in Southern California earlier in the week. His 11-year-old son underwent uh, a throat operation, but uh, he came back uh, yesterday and rejoined the team, the offensive coordinator, former head coach at Utah. And calls the plays. He helped put the play into the plan before he left. He probably feel last Tuesday, but it has to be a terrible train on him. Second and seven, and Tillman takes it inside the 10 and gets it to the eight-yard line, where it's going to be third down and four. 2.45 left in the third, and the Giants are on top 21 to 14. This is where the Bears defensively really need to step it. Forcing the Giants to kick a field goal, given this field position, is a real victory for the Chicago Bears. There's Bob Cratch, number 61. He explodes off the ball into William Perry, and he gets underneath Perry, and he wins the battle of leverage. That is just a sensational block by Boy. Bob Cratch, the left guard. And how many times have you seen that, Dan? Not very often, Whoa. because William Perry is one of the best run-playing defensive tackles in the National Football League. Bob Cratch is playing the game of his life tonight. Third down and a short four from the shotgun. There's the flag. Dead play. The play Whistle dead before its inception. I think maybe Bart Oates might have had the snap <laughs> number a little confused there. Yeah, yeah. Why? Because the entire <laughs> Giants team went with and the exception of the center? <laughs> <laughs> this is 10 men in motion. Fire through the snap. Offensive line moving, entire line. Five yard penalty. <laughs> Repeat third yeah. down. And That's the backs good. and the wide receivers. That's where you say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, shaking his head, our legal beagle, from the practicing attorney at center, Bardos, number 65. <laughs> I, I could have sworn it was on three. We better file a brief on that one when he discusses I, it. I could have sworn it was on three. That's going to make it third down and nine and create a timeout. So uh, too vital to play for the Giants here. Sims and Hanley to discuss it. 154 remaining in the third. This particular statistic on third down tonight, perfect. Six for six. Four times it's resulted in a first, and he's looking for another one here. Third and nine at the 14-yard line. There's step. And Neggett wants a holding call and doesn't see a flag. It's going to be fourth down. Pass intended for Megan. Take a look at it. Dent putting up pressure on Sims again. Megan stepped in to do the blocking, and you'll see him step up, looking for somebody to help on watch number 30. And he is held. There's no question yeah. about it. And Steve McMichael, who's been around for a long time, since that Megan was trying to get into the pattern, and he just grabbed the jersey and did not draw a flag. But in reality, when Megan is actually right in front of McMichael, McMichael starts treating him as a blocker and is allowed to grab him and play off of it. That's that's the type of a thing that rarely will get called as we see Barr connect. That's a 31-yard field goal to put the Giants up by 10. Steve McMichael gets away with it. <laughs> he was blocking. <laughs> Don't hurt him, Dave. 14. William Perry looking on from the sideline. His Bears are going to get the ball back as Barr will put it in the air from the 35-yard line. And it's a short kickoff, taken at the 17. This is Mark Green. Fights his way back out to the 33-yard line. We have college football coming up. Four big regional matchups. San City coming in with a mark of 2-1 and one from Ruckus Arrowhead next Monday night. Bears at the 32, down by 10. Harbaugh to throw, and underneath it, Jennings, the tight end, and he's muscled down by Jackson and Diaki. You know, at the very beginning of the game, we talked about the Giants 
if they lose tonight going in a new direction but if they win tonight by week next week and then you take a look at their schedule in October at the Raiders Phoenix at home at the Rams Seattle at home those four teams are two and ten hmm. And if you look way down there, December the 27th, they play at Philadelphia. Well, yeah, I mean, the second <laughs> half of their schedule is, is a monster. But they do have a chance to get back into the thick of things. Anderson gets tripped up by Carl Banks. Carl Banks picking up where he left off last week in the second half. He was all over the field in that second half against the Dallas Cowboys. Well, the Giants as a team playing like they played in the second half last week. I mean, this, again, we get a good look at Carl upfield fighting off a block, <laughs> making the tackle. But this is the way the Giants played in the second half against Dallas. They are, you can just see, more Giant players are getting to the football. Uh, they're multiple tackling. They're playing the ball on the Bears' side of the football now. This is, you know, if you're, if you're measuring attitude right now, it belongs to the New York Giants. Third down and four. Waning seconds of the third quarter. Keyed on Harbaugh. Harbaugh sacked at the 28-yard line. Banks and Fox converging. And Taylor sweeping in from the outside for good measure as well. Well, <laughs> Ray Hanley kept his sense of humor. He said, you know, it's not a bad time to take this show on the road. <laughs> in other words, let's get out of town. Right? Yeah. He was also commenting on, on the Ray Must Go chants that were taking place at the Meadowlands, talking about what wonderful devices headsets are. Yeah. He said, I don't take mine off. They're chanting, we love Ray right now. He leaves by 10. Back we come with Monday Night Football after this work for ABC Station. Hotland Town on this last night of summer where their team right now is teetering. Bears trail 24-14. We start the fourth quarter with a Chicago punt. Chris Gardaki to put it in the air. Dave Meggett accepts it at the 26-yard line. Eludes the first man. And there goes Meggett into Bear territory. Inside the 40, all the way to the 35-yard line for the suddenly resurgent New York Giants. And that is a healthy Dave Meggett. The first two games, he was nicked. Had the bad foot in the first game against the 49ers a sore neck last week and he can go 100% tonight and that's a good look at it. one of the premier punt returners in the league Giants controlled the ball dominated the third quarter the halftime stats were about even but now they begin to reflect the Giants dominance of that quarter 334 yards is a lot of offense for three quarters of play especially against a defensive team that People like to remember the Chicago Bears by aggressive, hard hitting. The Giants offensively tonight have played extremely well. Hanson, who sat out the third quarter as they went with Tillman, is back in. And Sims is going deep and almost Ooh. caught by Joey Smith after the tip. Joey Smith is probably the fastest man on the team. Probably the most nervous, too. Hmm. Joey okay. Smith is. He was cut by what the WFL a year ago and the Giants kept bringing him back. He's very inexperienced never really had a job in Louisville where he came from. And they just loved his speed and he almost came down with this one. Well Wolford makes a good play. We've we've gotten on Wolford a little bit for maybe giving too much cushion that time. He was right with a very speedy receiver and timed his timed his leap to the ball perfectly. Second and ten Giants at the thirty five. Opening minute of the fourth quarter, New York leading 24 to 14. Here is Hanson, knifing over left tackle, taking it to the 31, tackled by Ron Cox. Cox saved a, a big gainer. That was just a hair from maybe even taking it to the end zone. Bears all tight to the line of scrimmage. Cox made the saving tackle. First half, as you see, the yardage about even in, in the third quarter. A whole other story. Four total yards. That's last two scoring drives went, what, 167 yards? 80 and 87. Third down and seven. Make it six from the 32-yard line as Sims nearly gets sacked. Then steps it up. 
gets taken down from behind by Spellman, but I believe he's got the first. John Roper nearly drags him down behind the line of scrimmage, and Phil Sims has picked up a first down for the Giants. That time pressure on Sims, but he had plenty of time. There was just good coverage on the part of the Bears downfield, and he had to pull it down, and it went his way once again. It's just good pocket sense by Phil Sims, knowing what's real pressure and what's arm pressure. Phil Simpson panicked and leave early, knew that all that was going to happen was somebody was going to get a hand on him, and at 6'3", 215 pounds, a hand just isn't going to drag Phil Sims to the ground. It's that experience of 14 years. It's really shining through tonight for Sims. Here's Garrett Bunch for 15 yards. Dante Jones with the tackle. And some uneasiness here in Soldier Field. This crowd starting to boo their defensive players right now. In reality, they have been on the field for a long time. And right now, the Giants are starting to wear out and wear down the Chicago Bears. This is just plain, I'm going to root your butt off the line of scrimmage. Elliott with a great <laughs> block against the fridge that time, buried him inside. Yep. Mr. Attitude is definitely on the side of and favoring the New York Giants. They're making it happen. First and goal at the 10. Here's Bunch for a hard three. Durant, Giants trying to give the hand off. Gotham, the two Gotham teams that play in the Meadowlands in New Jersey, their first win of the season. The Jets 0-3, the Giants 0-2 coming in. Watch Bob Cratch the left guard and Bartos the center go the against the fridge. Good uh, goodbye, Mr. Fridge. Elliott spins three. Dent all the way Second back around. There wasn't a real good lead block that time by Hampton, but yeah. just outstanding offensive line play by the Giants. And they're going right at the strength of what you would think the Bears defense. This man, and I'm sure William Perry right now is going, I, I, I'm Richard a little Dent. surprised this is happening to me. He might be saying, you know, if I was heavier, I could really hold my position in here better. Second and goal at the seven. Here's Bunch again. Well, Hanley said last Bunch. night he wanted to get the ball, the ball to Bunch more, and true to his word, he has, and he, he kept going By back to him, too, shows. even after Bunch fumbled early on. And Bunch tonight has carried a bunch, 11 I times for 39 yards. Third and goal. Third and goal for the Giants from the Bears' pick. Gorgeous shot from straight above. Soldier Field. Hmm. You have a good stomach. Yeah. Yeah. That's the formation on third down and goal from the six. Big play for the Bears. Very big play. And Richard Dent sacked at the 15 yard line. Richard Dent. It's a huge play because if the Giants scored a touchdown, Chicago would have needed more than two touchdowns. But right now, if they can hold them to a bar field goal, they're still breathing. And you also didn't see any foolishness by Phil Simms. Mm -hmm. so knowing a sack does not compromise their field goal position in any shape, manner, or form, do not be foolish in attempting to throw that ball away, and it, it makes very little difference. And you talk about his 14 years of experience. He still has that enthusiasm that he brings to the game and brings to the huddle. He's like a kid out there. 32-yard field goal at a slight angle. Hostetler to put it down off the assy snap. And the kick is perfect. Bar converts. We have 10 minutes and 19 seconds left in the fourth quarter, and the New York lead is now 13. Phil Sims getting sacked on that last play prior to the field goal by Barr by Richard Dent. Sims is, uh, well, he's used to going down. <laughs> Here's this week's animation. How many times has Sims gone down? 436 sacks in his career, and that's second only to Fran Tarkin. That's a great shot of Fran there, isn't it? Oh, really? Fran will like that. Yeah, our, that. <laughs> our thanks to the animators from Moo Mesa for that. <laughs> Bar's kick is taken by Mark Green at the five. Back to the 19-yard line. And there's a flag down. You mean Cal Dorado? Philippine Sparks, their second-round pick out of Arizona State, made the tackle. 
And the call goes against the Bears. Just what they needed here. Well, Iron Mike is Illegal not used to losing games in September. Half the distance penalty, first down. The Bears have been fantastic in the month of September in Ditka's regime, but they're on the verge now of going one and two. And even though the Giants have 27 points on the board, uh, you give a lot of credit to the New York offense and Phil Sims. They played well. But you have to look at this group for Chicago, and they have done absolutely nothing here in the second half. Four total yards. As you see, Chicago since 85, 24 and 4 in September, but they need to come back tonight as Harbon first time throws, and the catch is made on the near side. That's Wendell Davis tackled by Perry Williams. You know, the best the offense has been for the Chicago Bears, Dan and Alex, when they opened up and they were doing a lot of trick plays and things that we had not seen from the Bears. They had a fake reverse. They they did a an end around or they tried just a little bit of everything. They were they, mixing it beautifully, yeah. Frank. You're right. And they went right back to uh, just the old bruising type of football that is not getting it done. Well, they came from behind against Detroit, actually winning the game on a hardball pass on the last play of the game. So the confidence is there. I mean, I'm sure that number four here thinks that they can come back and win it. That was Chicago's first oh, first down of this half. 9.23 to go. Harbaugh is a good scrambler. Close to a first down up to the 30-yard line. Taylor and Fox converge on the hit. Well, he'll scramble for you. 340 yards rushing last year. Averaging about seven or eight yards a pop. That's 70 or 80 this year already. Close enough, I believe, to measure here at the 30-yard uh, line. They'll bring the uh, sticks in with 8.59 left. Maybe this measurement will be closer than a yard. Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> see if we can get the uh, Craig is chain in the shot. <laughs> you know, so we're going to the wide shot. Taking the wide shot here. I can see that. <laughs> okay. Legitimate measurement. They phased him the last time. Well, the last time the Giants came into uh, Chicago and went home with a victory, Frank, you were wearing number 16. The Giants haven't won a game here since 62. Mm -hmm. Well, I did let a big day. Which means they've never won at Soldier Field. Exactly. Even though this place yeah. is 1,000 years old, they used to play at Wrigley Field in those days and then came here in 70. First down at the... 30-yard line, Harbaugh throws, Muster makes the catch underneath, tackled by Diossi, gain of about six. You know, you don't get this sense of enthusiasm. Here we are in the fourth quarter, they're down 27-14, and they're not, you know, hustling back to that huddle. Mm -hmm. You don't just don't get the feeling that they feel that they can pull this out. Ditka wants him to pick up the tempo here a yeah, little he's bit. trying to get a move. Yeah. 8.15 to go in regulation. 27 to 14. Giants. And that's off the fingertip of the intended receiver, Eric Wright, wearing Willie Goldsoul number. Third down. Well, that's what they need. The, the Chicago Bears need a speedy receiver. In a situation like this, you're down by 13, but they don't have anybody who can really go deep catch the bomb well, and they really haven't had any great speed at receivers yeah. since Willie Galt left this club mm -hmm. the guy they've counted on in this situation uh, time and time again particularly last year is Tom Waddle and I don't think he's caught a ball tonight no yeah he's in there now and usually on third and medium yardage he's the guy they like to go to and this is the play they setting up with the formation that they beat Detroit on the final play of the game Third down and five from the 35-yard line. Harbaugh throwing into traffic, and that's incomplete at the 40-yard line. Davis, the intended receiver, broken up by Renee Thompson. Fourth down, and the Bluebirds are up. Well, Davis, <laughs> Davis had coverage in front, and he had Renee Thompson on top of him in the back. Gardaki to punt and Megat to accept it. At the 21 yard line. Megat brings it back out to the 29. 
tackled by Dante Jones. Giants have it again. 7.51 left in the fourth. New York 27, Chicago 14. Around the country going into this week is that Ray Hanley was a coach, shall we say, under siege. He's anything but. I mean, he kept his cool about things, and tonight, well, this could, this could be a big turnaround night for the Giants. Not only the perception, if you live in New York, you know he was. Uh, he was accused of everything uh, in New York. But uh, what he really did is listen to his guys. He shortened up the defensive package and let them play their brand of football. He also put them on the spot, Dan, and made them perform because they were kind of demanding a less sophisticated and complicated defensive package. Well, the one thing you can say about Ray Hanley, if the Giants do go ahead and win this ballgame, he has the same record as Mike Ditka. I mean, both teams here will leave the field with a one and two record. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, you could even make a stretch that if they if they happen to end up in competition for a wild card spot in head to head, it belongs to the New York Giants. That sounds strange, but we're saying these types of things about a ball club that was facing 0 and 3, and I mean totally out of the picture. The fickleness of it is they're going to be. I think there's going to be a little more concern in Chicago than there might be in New York after this game as to the immediate future of their respective teams. Valid point, Al. Valid point. Second down and eight at the 31-yard line. Of course, all your points are valid. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the 36-yard line. Take just a moment to uh, wish Bob Tish, one of the owners of the Giants, so well. He is. He did not make this trip. The first Giants game he has not seen since he purchased half of the football team. And he is fine. Nothing serious, but he's a little ill in New York, and I'm sure he's looking on and feeling much better. He might be all well by now. Great football fan going back to back to the 60s when he used to come around, uh, hang around. He'd even come out on the field, sit on the bench. Good friend of Alex Sherman, the Giants coach at the time. We wish him well. Giants have a third down and three at the 36. Sends the master, taking as much time off the clock as he can. The play clock is down to five. And like the veteran quarterback he is, he gets it off at one. And Dave Meggett squirts through the middle, and Dave Meggett picks up the first down. So Sims, well, you can't do it any better than that. You take all the time off the clock, you convert on third down, you keep it moving, and we're under six minutes to go. Urgency should spawn intensity, and intensity should spawn aggressiveness. And all of those have been apparent tonight when you looked at this game as to who needed it most mm -hmm. and right now as we move to about five minutes and 40 seconds left in this ball game the New York Giants are playing like the team that desperately needed a win and the Bears are playing like they were eight and zero, oh, and a loss was meaningless and far from the case far from the case for the Chicago Bears they have, they're going to go to one and two if they lose this thing and not exactly a rosy picture again Hanson and Sims took that clock down to one you know one of these one of these years we ought to stay on the air for Ditka's uh, post game press conference after a loss Chicago has to take a timeout Mike <laughs> well last week they lose to New Orleans and uh, he was a beauty at the end we'll come back and uh, relate some of his quotes in a moment Giants brain trust Wellington Mara leading forward there second down and eight as Jared Bunch after the Chicago timeout picks up a couple and his gang tackled and pushed back at the 48 yard line and the Bears are going to spend another timeout they just have to do whatever they they've got to get the ball back it's as simple as that I know it's unusual to see timeouts being taken at this point but clearly if the Giants are going to run down the clock the way Sims was on his way to doing well you have to look at the clock matter. differently when you need two scores sure. to take the lead and that's what's facing Mike Ditka and his Bears right now. Well, Mike is Mike is not giving a lot of straight answers these days. Uh, he, he waxed very philosophical last week in, in New Orleans. In fact, at one point, a reporter sort of uh, innocently asked, "Well, how you know how did your team wind up giving up two long bombs to the relatively conservative Saints?" Was the question, and Mike said, "You throw long, you throw short. That's football, son." What was noteworthy is that he answered the question of a 55-year-old television reporter. <laughs> well, he's a couple of years Some. older than him. <laughs> yeah. Mike Ditka is facing, for a competitor of his stature, a very difficult realization. And that is simply that this is not a Chicago Bears team that, that will remind anyone of the powerhouse team that they had in the 80s. The talent on this team is not quite what it was. 
and it's apparent in a game like this. Third down and six. Sims. Phil Sims throwing. Was he across the line? Oh, yes, he was. Howard Cross. Howard Cross makes the catch, but this one's coming back. He was well over the line. Well, Cross was so open. <laughs> <laughs> Looks so good. Yeah, well, if he wanted to give it to him that bad, he should have run up to him and handed yeah. it to him. Nothing else. It took a lot more time off the clock. The thing when you look at wait for the call. Quarterback was a lot beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. Five yards, lost it down from the spot, lost it down, brings up fourth down. Mm -hmm. That's a heavy one. The thing you look at when I mentioned a moment ago about the Bears offensive team, knowing that they needed to put 14 points on the board, there was no uh, there was no rushing to the line of scrimmage. There was no let's get it on, and you see the same thing now with the defense. Sort of let's get it over with. Doesn't get easier for the uh, Bears next Sunday either. They'll face Atlanta. Look at those empty seats at Soldier Field. This part of the crowd has already departed. Landed a kick. Wolford to receive it. They put the thrill in the punt last week. One blocked and one deflected. We know they worked on that. John counting it right down, using every second. Wolford at the 15, fumbles the ball. He recovers it himself. Renee Thompson, as usual, is the first giant down there. 448 left in the fourth, and Victor's team still down by 13. Sunday, Jack, Arnie, and Chi Chi will tee it up with the senior tour, Jack, Arnie, and Chi Chi. Raymond Floyd will be a force on the yes. senior tour. Uh -huh. He just did it first, didn't he? He went right. both on the seniors tour and also on the regular tour. Oh, great player he is. There's Harbaugh on first down. Back is made up at the 21-yard line. Wendell Davis gets tackled there by Everson Wall. A gain of six. And they had a lot of for the Bears, and Harbaugh is very good at it, too. Little dump off. Anderson. Oh, Taylor all the way from the other side. Close to a first down as he squirts forward. And literally playing it with one arm now, but Lawrence Taylor stayed in there. If you're with us very early, you know that he went down early in the first quarter with a sprained shoulder. That time he came from all the way across the field to make the stop. That might have been, a, that might have been one of the shortest completions in record. Yep. That ball went about two feet in the air. Third and inches, and Anderson takes it up to the 30-yard line. For a first down under four minutes to play, Pepper Johnson makes the tackle. The giant defense again. Leonard Marshall not here. Eric Howard limited action tonight. Taylor hurt early on. Backup linebacker Corey Millen hurt early on and gone for the rest of the night. Ed Reynolds hurt early on and gone for the rest of the night as Wright makes the catch. But they have held together in this team that gave up more points in the first two weeks than any other. Turning in a very good performance. Yeah, it's getting a little uneasy now. They remember a year ago when the Bears were down and they came back. Remember the diving touchdown on the part of Neil Anderson after the Bears made a terrific comeback. And it was what? The bridge blocking a field goal. Second and five, end. and he's going to air it out. That's a great catch by Dennis Gentry. The 11th year receiver and kick returner out of Baylor gives him a first down at the 47 of the Giants. Almost the forgotten Barry hasn't done that much over the last couple of years, but was a fine receiver and was a big part of the Bears offense for a lot of years. Not all that big, but he is a tough competitor, and he comes down Virtual with it knowing foul. he was going to get hit. Roughing a passer, uh -oh. number 28, blow to the head, 15-yard penalty, first down. Everson oh. Walls. And you people watching this game tonight that are New York Jets fans, I'm sure you think back to a year ago and, and think to yourself, I've seen this before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And Giants fans, sure, they just pointed out they had a pretty good lead a year ago here. Well, marginal call. First down at the 32-yard line. And Harbaugh throws off the fingertips and nearly picked off. Gentry couldn't hold on. Greg Jackson. 
nearly came up with it. That stops the clock, 2.58 remaining in the fourth. Giants up by 13. One timeout for Chicago left, plus one at the two-minute warning. Almost an interception, a little high for uh, Gentry. And diving for it, coming up short is Jackson and Mark Collins. Second and 10 at the 32-yard line. Harbaugh to Waddle, and that's incomplete. Waddle going to the ground at the 17 and can't hold on. Third down and 10, coverage by Perry Williams. 2.53 left. You know, a kid whose name I've got to mention is Troy Ozine, the left tackle for the Bears. The rookie has really been going against Lawrence Taylor most of the evening tonight, and even though Taylor is dinged, this guy here is going to be a real football player. He's our second-round draft choice this year from Cal, and he is, he is destined to be an awful good offensive lineman. Third down and 10. He works on Taylor. Taylor puts a spin move on, and Harbaugh is able to get it away to Gentry for the completion, but short of the first down. Take a look at Lawrence Taylor's move here. Well, this is this is a, a move that that rookies rookies have a tendency to lean, and right there, Ozine leans too much to the outside. You know, it's, it, it never fails. How come the how come the minute I mention these guys, they end up playing in a? Well, here's your last breath for Chicago. It's fourth down and four at the 26-yard line. Scrambling. Throwing, that's incomplete. And Everson Walls is the guy who provided the coverage and provided a very big play early on tonight with an interception that swung the momentum of this one in the first half. And good coverage over the other side. Actually, he had plenty of time, Arbaugh, to deliver a, a pass, certainly a four-yard one. And he came out of the pocket, and Everson Walls was there. Very cagey. He's been around a while, gets an arm in there, just... Enough to give him a little leverage on it. <laughs> Just enough to get him a little leverage. Well, huh, you've been around here 12 years. You learn how to do those kinds of things and avoid bringing the flag. But this was desperation on the part of Harbaugh. And who's in his face? Lawrence Taylor. I'd say that was blatant interference. Well, it worked, though, didn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've seen two tonight. Two I guess that evens up for uh, Steve McMichael uh, putting the grab on, uh, on Dave Mega. Hmm. Somehow it tends to. No flag, no foul. Balls with his 50, what, 54th interception, 55th interception tonight. Led the league three different times as a Dallas Cowboy. Look what the Giants have done with their second half possessions. And look at the length of their scoring drives. 11, 13, and 8 plays. That has been a very, very dominating second half by the New York Giants. When early on, guys, you'd have to agree with me, it, the Bears had the Giants back on their heels, mixing up the plays. Uh, guys like LT leaving the game being hurt. Mm -hmm. This has been a role reversal tonight. The Giants have completely regrouped and come mm -hmm. back and turned in an excellent performance. Uh -huh. Great performance by Sims, as you mentioned. But I think Lawrence Taylor, considering the state of the Giants' defense with Leonard Marshall not even here out with an injury and Eric Howard unable to start the game, and for him to come back in, I think was maybe he wasn't all that effective and that he has played well, but he gave him quite a lift when he came back out on the field, and he's done that over and over. Oh, he faked me out. He was undoing the yeah. tape. He looked like he, he was, was gone. Looked like he was packing it in and Next thing you know, he's back out on the field. Rod Rust, a, a guy who had uh, been under intense scrutiny and taken a lot of heat. <laughs> he's a hero for a night anyway. His he defense was, doing uh, the job. The defensive coordinator, and some satisfaction yeah. for him tonight, he was a defensive coordinator for New England back in 1985 when the Bears ran at 46 points against them in Super Bowl 20. That clock had just stopped on the... Uh, Last Bears timeout. Now it'll stop after the camp and move out to the 33 for the two-minute warning. Chicago out of timeouts. Two minutes remaining in regulation. The New York Giants on the verge of their first win of the season. And McMichael. Not a very happy scene on the Bears sideline. The blimp from SeaWorld. Shamu. Airship Shamu providing the uh, scenics tonight. 
I think they're sending us some sort of a signal there, huh? Yes. There a couple of light flashes. Yes. Searching for intelligent life in the booth. <laughs> Good no, luck. Why, no, just because Kenny Wolf <laughs> says it doesn't mean you guys. Well, I thought it was pretty interesting. <laughs> Third down and four, and the Giants with the first down will be able to run the clock out. And Rodney Hampton, I believe, has given them enough to move the sticks. And if he has, they'll just uh, do a couple of kneel downs. And for the first time in 30 years, the Giants will fly home from Chicago as a happy group. First and it'll be George Young's birthday tomorrow man. for the general yeah. manager and a very yeah. happy Ray Hanley. Yes. You know, I think he is. I don't know of any other coach in a long time that's gone through what he's gone through. Mm -hmm. Sean Landetto over there trying to get close, knowing full well the camera will be on Hanley at this stage of the game. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks to Kenny Wolf, our producer, Craig Janoff, our director. Nice job. As always. As always. always yeah. Yeah. Look at Ray. Look at the smile on Ray Hammond. <laughs> our executive producer, Jack O'Hara. Our technical director, Joe Shavo. Associate director, Ben Harvey. Dick Buffington, Emily Deutsch, Nancy Stern, our halftime producers. Fred King and Mitch Green, the assistants to the producer. Ed McKenna, Al Fong, Jim Licata. In the uh, tech area, director of information, Steve Hurd. Our statistician, as always, George Hill. Our spotter is the indomitable... Malibu Kelly Hayes, Kirsten Anderson handling the action up here, Mark Amento and Brian Mobelson on the computer statistics. As Ray Hammy works the room. Yes. <laughs> Final kneel down by Phil Sims. And a very happy group of New York Giants have just begun to what they hope will be a resurrection of their season. And Minnesota and Tampa Bay sit atop the central with two and one marks. And the Bears, so good so often in September, are now one and two with Atlanta coming to town Sunday. Giants win 27 to 14. We'll return for a closing word in a moment. <laughs> 